So what I'm going to do to, to create the bird, instead of just painting right on top of my background, which could cause kind of a, a, a muddy mess, I'm going to use this, it's a water brush um, that I put 91% alcohol in and I made sure to label it there so that, you know, when I go to watercolor, I don't accidentally watercolor with alcohol. Um, so I, I'll use this. I have also used this, um, it's a, a blending, a blender. Um, it's, it's not Copic, it, this is the Hobby Lobby brand um, also. And you can use this to, to kind of start your drawing if you wanted. Like, um, I'm gonna start with the beak. And so I can kind of draw out the bird using this first. The only problem that I've had with these is that they kind of dry out pretty quickly. Um, and I find it just really hard to work with. Um, the good thing about them is they, they don't bloom out like, like the alcohol will. But you can really kind of control the alcohol that comes out of this. Um, and it makes it a little easier to deal with the bloom. I also start not drawing um, aggressively, if that makes sense. Um, Sometimes I'll start a little smaller than I think I'm going to do and then I can always make the bird a little bigger. It's really hard to replace the background over something than to just add, you know, the, the alcohol because if it makes sense, um, you have all these patterns going in your background and it's really hard to get that again to make it look you know like it it transitions correctly so um, I'm just going to to wipe this and see it's blooming a little more than I really wanted it to right there but I'm going to going to keep going because that's kind of where the head will start anyway um, and then I can always go back and and try to fix it later so I just want to be really I'm just careful about the blooming and once you get going it it actually gets easier um, I'm just like outlining the bird I'm not I'm not worried about what's gonna be on the inside because all of this is gonna go away if that you know what I mean it's just like it's gonna be wiped out so I'm not concerned like where the eyes gonna be in all that right now so um, I'm looking at a photo reference um, of a, a photo I got online. Um, it's not a, a photo I took because I don't even think we have kingfishers here. But um, I'm not also not going to make it look exactly like the photo. It's just a reference so that, you know, I, I can look at it, know what a kingfisher looks like. Sometimes I will draw in just for my own reference, although it's not going to stay this way, but I will draw in like where there's a wing here and I just want to, it's not going to look like this in the end. I'm not worried about it. I'm just wanting to kind of block in where it's going to go so that when I do start messing with the inside, I will know approximately where I want to be. So now I'm looking at it and I do want to increase the size a little bit but I want to be really careful not to not to bloom out and I'm not squeezing this. I'm just letting however much alcohol is coming to the tip come out but I'm not squeezing it out like I do when I'm I'm painting with water for watercolor um, because I don't want um, to squeeze out. If I, if I were to squeeze it out, um, it would just and just start blooming out. Mm -hmm. 
The feet are very difficult at first. Um, I just kind of give myself an idea of where they are, but I will really be painting and drawing them afterwards. So once I've got the outline, um, I kind of know how the bird's going to be sitting. I know that this outline is, is pretty much what I want. Um, at that point, then I will just start removing everything on the inside of my outline. And that just takes a lot of like wipe, wiping here and then cleaning off my brush, which I will squeeze a little bit to get that out. Being careful not to bloom beyond my outline. So I won't necessarily go all the way. Um, and none of this will be here, so you don't have to worry about the color of it. You don't have to worry about the look of it, just, although I will kind of keep that wing where I had it. I keep looking back at my reference. I just want to make sure I'm where I want to be with the bird and how it looks and make any adjustments to the size or or how the bird is shaped. So I want to come out a little more right here. And so this this is the stage that you want to do this. You just want to be rechecking the shape. Kind of sit back a little, look at it. At this stage, I don't have to get this completely down to white. Um, the Alcohol ink I put down to color the bird will cover most of this, so I don't have to get completely down to the white. One thing I like about this paper instead of Yupo is that it doesn't seem to stain. I really could get it down to white if I wanted. I'll show you. Basically what I'm doing when I start adding color is I'm, I'm getting a basic local color that I want on here. I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm not doing the details. I'm working from, from general, the general look of the bird and then as I layer, as I go, then I start adding the details. So um, actually this brush is probably going to be too small. I want a, a little bit bigger brush than that. I also have learned this from Teresa Kovlak. Um, I have black in a separate container. These are little, um, they're actually little salt containers, antique salt containers that I got at a, a little um, antique store. They're really cheap. It was like $3 or something like that. But they're awesome to use for alcohol inks. I like that. So I'm always going back and forth over to my paper towel. I want to make sure that it doesn't, if it blooms really badly on my paper towel, I know it's going to bloom really badly on my painting. So I want to get it to where I'm seeing not a lot of movement. And also another tip is I don't start right on the edge because I don't know sometimes exactly how far it's going to bloom out. So I'm going to kind of start away from the edge first just to get a bearing on how it's going to act and then I'll go ahead and and edge toward the, the edge. I'm constantly looking at my reference. I don't trust myself to know how a kingfisher really looks um, so 
I'm constantly looking at my subject so that I know I'm not going to make a mistake that's going to be difficult to to fix. Although alcohol inks are, are very nice for correcting things. So I have my dirty alcohol here, like I was showing you, that I've used for several paintings. And I use it to clean off my brush. And then I use the clean alcohol to dip into my paint. I'm just gonna start adding like a lighter color. I'm gonna add this, the um, turquoise. Testing first to see how much it's gonna bloom so that I can control it a little bit more. Like I said, I'm, I'm putting down general color. Um, the eye's gonna be right here, but I'm not gonna worry about that yet. I'm also going to be building up the color. Um, this is going to be a darker blue when I get done. I probably should have gotten a little more of this green color up because I see it's mixing with the blue quite a lot. So you may want to bring it um, back to the to the white of the paper as much as as much as you think you're going to need to, depending on the colors you're using. Now this area here is going to be. I'm gonna wipe off a little bit of that. This area is going to be white. Of course, white doesn't necessarily mean completely white. It's going to have some browns. And I actually add colors other than what's in the reference photo. Now we can start putting in details. 